main focus for everybody is to realize what their purpose on this planet is, is to create the best version of themselves and give that person to the world. Frequency is what you frequently see. When you're operating from shameful acts, I don't know, porn, drinking, smoke weed when you told yourself not to, fucking just shameful behavior. So you're operating from that bottom of the pyramid, it's a 20, the frequency's actually a 20. And then enlightenment is like an eight, 900. I placed so much emphasis on validation from others before I went to prison. Then I realized they all disappeared. And then at that moment, when I really realized that I was seeking love from other people, I decided to love myself. The hyper success traits of the, the top individuals are this. So number one, you think you're better than everyone. Number two, never satisfied. Number three is what most people lack the most, impulse control. Once you have impulse control, once you're never satisfied, and once you think you're gonna be the best, those are the traits of a hyper successful individual. What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Honor Pursuit Podcast. We interview six, seven, eight, even nine-figure entrepreneurs, right? Trying to get their story so it makes it easier for you so you can get to your success. In today's episode, I got someone that uh, I'm inspired by, and we had to get him on the show. You know, he was in the design district. I was in the design district. I said, yo, Wes, what's good? He turned around, and, and, and the rest is history, so we're here, bro. Yeah, topic of that day was just energy, like the people 100%. you're around, everything that everything that motivates you and pushes you and drives you to be better. And right when I came out, you had that same, the same topic came back to me that I was sharing with a client earlier that day. And I was like, man, this guy knows what's up, but no one really realizes yet that it's mindset. They see the flashy yeah. stuff. They see the lifestyle. They see all this, yeah. but you need to make the business man before you have the business plan. And they come in thinking, Hey, give me the business plan. Then I'll become the man. Mm. It don't fucking work that way. I've never seen a guy work backwards very well. I've never seen a really rich guy work backwards and get jacked but I've seen plenty of people get themselves in line, make the best for themselves, and then get very financially successful. It rarely happens the other way. So everybody watching this, that's your goal. Make the best you, give that individual to the world, which I've said our life's purpose is from day one. So we're gonna get on Wes's brand real quick. I gotta ask you, how the fuck does somebody get bulletproof, bro? Let's talk about that. How do we get bulletproof? The mindset of a bulletproof, undeniable, fucking straight savage, it starts with your daily habits. You have a list of stuff that your heart's telling you to do each day. I don't even believe it's an option. I believe you're ordained with this. Mm. I believe when you're being called, like we were talking, he's being called to, he wants a family. That means it's non-negotiable, it's a must. Yeah. Whatever we're being called to, we can't get in the way. Wes Watson can't get in the way of that path. So when I was in prison, it was, no, you gotta be up first because in prison, your daily program is what makes you who you are. You don't have cars, you, don't, you can't floss with your woman, your house, your money, so your stuff. So the program is the status. Your program is your status in prison. So I would just get up earlier than everyone. I was mm. up at 2.45 reading at 4 o'clock count when most people get up. I'm already reading and did one workout. And then I would just got more tatted than everyone, mm. was more jacked than everyone, mm. did more workouts a day. My area was cleaner. I read more. I articulated better. I mean, I was just way on point with what our program is. And in prison, it's... Your workouts, your wake up time, do you use drugs or not? How down are you when shit's about to crack? You know, and how, how much institu institutional sophistication does one possess? Which I was always the height of, really. Mm. And I mean, this is knowing how to move, knowing how to operate, knowing how to read people, knowing how to read energy, read the yard. If something's going down over in the in the fucking in the bathroom area and you're living you're living in a dorm, you don't go look over at it and dime out the cameras. A real OG, when that shit's happening, you're just still reading your book. And this motherfucker's getting booked over here. Most, most new ass motherfuckers, they'll watch the beef going down. They'll watch the problem happening. They'll watch someone getting DP'd and they'll dive it off to the cameras. And all I'm doing when shit like that's happening is watching people and making sure that they know how to operate correctly. Same thing if there's a woman walking the tier. Does this guy make her feel uncomfortable? Mm. Is this dude a creep on her? Or is this dude just let her live her fucking life? Like, who is this motherfucker? So we're reading people 24-7 because people can talk a big game, yep. but we know who someone is by their energy, by their, by their, by their actions, and their daily habits. You know? So how, how did you get that, right? How was that instilled within you? Oh, just years in the penitentiary. Years in the penitentiary just living a very uh, structured life and it just being so monotonous, you just start to go inward. There's nothing outward. What the fuck's outward? The same day every day? So you start to live inside yourself. You start to really, you start to, really start to cultivate an internal state that is where you want to live. Mm. So I always tell people the world is not as it is. The world is as you are. So people who see a shitty fucking existence out here, it's because they're shitty inside. 
And that's the whole thing. It's like, people always tell me they want to do something big with their life. I'm like, you're not ready. They're like, why? I'm like, well, you still suck at being you, motherfucker. And they're like, what do you mean I suck at being me? You don't even know me. I'm like, do you hold your word to yourself? It looks like you don't. You really want to look like that? Well, I know you're not holding your word to yourself and you're training your nutrition. I mean, there's plenty of, do you really want to be drunk all night and be acting like that? I know you're not holding your word to yourself with your, with your vices. I mean, so to be the best version of you, it starts with holding your word to yourself and respecting yourself. Because if not, you're going to draw in like energies. Mm. Like, did you, then you're an energetic match for people you don't want to be around. Yeah, and people, people think like, oh, these snakes are following me. You created those, motherfucker. 100%. You drew yeah. those in, motherfucker. Yeah. Pay attention. Yep. So, so you speak a lot about frequency and energy, right? So, so how is it? How is it and why is it important for someone to be conscious of that and then tap, tap into a higher frequency? I got the chills right now. Look, you lit me up. And I always say your frequency is what you frequently see. Your frequency so, is what you frequently one see. One of the best bars you'll ever mm. know. And you guys, you need to pull up the frequency chart for everyone. They need to Google low frequency emotional emotions chart. There will be a chart where at the top is enlightenment. At the bottom is shame. Mm. So when you're operating from shameful acts, I don't know, porn, drinking, Smoke a weed when you told yourself not to. Uh, cheating on your chick. Fucking just shameful behavior. Cheating on your diet when that was big for you. Anything big for you that you break on will cause shame. So you're operating from that bottom of the pyramid. It's a 20. The frequency is actually a 20. And then enlightenment is like an eight, 900. Mm. So, I mean, every day you're going to wake up basically in a state of desire. Desire to be better. And that's still low frequency. So anger is right above desire. So how do I get you from low frequency state of desire, wanting more, to getting into that state of self-love, getting in that state of gratitude, that state of enlightenment? We're slowly going to have daily habits that elevate our frequency. And these, these daily habits are aligned with your conscience's call. They've said from the dawn of time that the conscience is the authentic voice of God. The so conscience is authentic your voice Your conscience is the authentic yeah. voice of God. Yeah. So the second you deny your conscience's call, you'll never elevate to what I call you know, Christ consciousness, you know, walking in the footsteps, being guided by creation. And a lot of people will say that high frequency is like the consciousness of our creator and low frequency is where demonic possession happens. Mm. I mean, whether you want to look at it from religious, a religious standpoint or straight physics, they both work. Yeah, they both work. I mean, low frequency yeah. or high frequency, I like to say there's only a low frequency Wes and a high frequency Wes, nothing else matters. So if I wake up in a low frequency state of desire, how do I move past that? Well, I'm, I'm adhering to every little step that my conscience is calling from me. And that's why my routine has always been a 2.45 a.m. wake up. Then I go straight into like a visualization practice, a quick little read of something positive to gain the real vision, the true vision of my 10.0 self and who I'm going to walk the day as. The man I need to walk the day as. Because everywhere I go, I carry four strikes with me. So I have to remember that I want to smash a motherfucker's head in 90% of the day. So that's, that, gonna, so that's gonna keep you keep you where you need to be so you don't do that. I need to yeah. make sure that I'm visualizing, hey, yeah. this is coming for you, this is coming for you, this is coming mm. for you, this is coming for you. As, as detailed as if someone wanted a problem with me at the gym, I could just tell them, hey man, like what's really going on, you good? Yeah. Or I could be like, bitch, what you want? I wanna fucking, you want some shit, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. Like, I mean, which one am I gonna be? So I have to, I have to create who I'm gonna walk that day as in the morning, and I can do it instantaneous. Yeah. I can do it while I'm driving to the gym. I'm just telling myself the immediate things that are coming to der derail me could even be some, could be a, a, a lawyer thing or some of my accountants or something that's pissing me the fuck off that's trying to bring me down into a low frequency state. But if I deny that and I say, no, it's a good day anyways, that's all constructs, constructs of the sensory world, the world that man created, I don't exist there. I exist in, in, the, in the state way beyond that where I'm in control of everything I feel because I've been in prison and I, I did 14 months in the shoe while doing 10 years of incarcerated time mm. in CDC, which is gangland. This is state prison. It's not the feds. It's not Martha Stewart shit. And the thing is, is during that time, even locked in a box, I was able to find more peace than what most people live at, what most people call life out here today mm. with everything. Even me, even with all my shit, my 12 exotic cars, all paid for cash, my fucking $24 million mansion, my beautiful wife, my beautiful family, everything I have that I, I have a, a pa I have a purpose where I get to help people for a living, everything going for me, I still have had less 
inner peace out here than in prison by myself. And once I earned that and I saw that was the goal, was inner peace each day. That was the main goal. If I got there, then I could I could construct a life that I desire. But to get there, how do I get there? Yeah, how do we get there? It was it was daily steps. So I like to say conscience congruent living turns confusion to clarity. So when I listen to what conscious congruent living turns confusion into clarity. Conscience congruent living turns confusion to clarity. Mm. So when I'm living in congruence with my conscience, with which is the path that I feel our creator ordained for me, well then I have no fear. I'm actually walking towards exactly what's meant for me. And when people when people avoid that, when they don't do what they need to do, that's when they have these this anxiety or this yeah. other shit they call it. So I mean, in prison, I just stuck to my daily process every day, which was a 245 wake up, going into a visualization practice of who I needed to be that day. That was mainly like when the cops approach me, I don't, hey man, I don't want no fucking shit. Like I'm doing my I'm doing my own shit. Like, don't don't worry about me, motherfucker. Because I had cell phones the whole time in prison. Mm. I documented my on my Instagram the whole time in prison. So they would routinely come up, toss my shit, cuff me up, look for my phones and shit. And they'd be like, I follow you on Instagram. You know that, right? I said, I know you do. It's kind of fucking weird, you know? <laughs> You're never going to send me a message or anything or just yeah, say what's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, you fucking idiot. Yeah. And I'm, I'm handcuffed and they're like looking through my oatmeal. They're looking through my Tide boxes. They're looking through my beans, my fucking looking through my commissary. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, no, you got it. And they're like, they're thinking they're getting close to fucking what they're finding. I'm like, you ain't going to find shit, dog. Why well, you think I'm that dumb? Like, and they're just like, I'm going to catch you one day. I said, how's that possible? Yeah. And they're just like, I'm going to get you one day. I said, it's not possible. And they're just like, fuck you. Yeah. They're like, take your, your Instagram uh, photos down or you're not going home. Take I, your photos yeah, down. Yeah, take your pictures down off your Instagram. D delete your Instagram or you're not going home. I said, I am home, bitch. What the fuck you talking about? Yeah. I've been here longer than you, homie. Mm. And the guy's just like, oh, fuck. This guy is, imp fuck Like you. they can't get you. Yeah, they're, yeah, this guy's impossible. This guy's unbreakable. Because the whole thing is, is like, I, what people try to inflict on you is their fear. Mm. His fear was to never go home. That's not mine. So even when bitch-ass motherfuckers try to out you online nowadays, that's his fear. Yeah. That ain't mine. Like, I've been through real shit. You think some dude I don't know talking about me online bothers me? Try and get your phones the and shit. The fuck is that? <laughs> like, I've been through real shit in yeah. life, you know? So, I mean, the, the process to bring me peace has been since day one, the early wake up 245 into my reflection process, then straight into workout one, which is usually burpees in the pen, which is like knocking out 123 burpees as quick as I can, getting that wind up, getting that positive mental attitude, and then tracking my macros the rest of the day, which is hard in prison. Yeah. You're finding ways to hit your protein mark. But I mean, I always just loved myself first and foremost. And the whole thing was why I had to do that. I placed so much emphasis on validation from others before I went to prison. And then I realized they all disappeared. My parents never visited me. Not one friend ever. One friend came and saw me, but nobody really wrote me. Nobody really fucking gave a fuck. And the thing was, is I started to hate on them. Where the fuck you motherfuckers at? You guys just forget about me? I ain't shit now. You can't write me. You can't even pick up the phone. Shit, I texted you. I made it easy as fuck. Like, what the fuck is this shit? And then at that moment, when I really realized that I was seeking love from other people, I decided to love myself. And that's why you see the confidence I have. You motherfuckers see that I'm a different type of person on screen than most people because I really love and respect myself. Were you not loving yourself prior? I wasn't. I mean, I was doing drugs. I was drinking. I was engaged in shit that was going to destroy my life. Is that respect and love for self? Fuck no. Mm. Deteriorating self, disrespecting self consistently. Now, all my acts all day are acts of self-love and self-respect. And these are just self-investment. You know, the workout. How the fuck do motherfuckers really believe they're going to live a great life not building a great body? Like, what the fuck's that about? They really listen to people and not their conscience. Mm. Your conscience is telling you right now, I need to, at all times, your conscience is telling you, nah, I want my arms a little bigger. Nah, I need to get a little weight off back. That's how I felt this morning in jail. Yeah. yeah, just every little thing. But when you really believe that that's not your choice and you're saying, if I follow that, where's that going to take me? And you operate from, from that faith. This is when your life will change because you'll just realize that's God creating a perfect motherfucker down here that can push this message. So, so what's watching spiritual then, you're saying? Oh, yeah, always. I mean, I, I really, I, I went, into, went into prison being just a gangster motherfucker who would, if you had enough money 
at the spot, I'll smoke you and take it. Mm. And it's just what it is. Like, I didn't give a fuck. It was all about money, my status, me, 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 me. And that just destroyed me. But I mean, when I went to prison, it was more, I actually got baptized in prison, but I was never like Jesus, 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 all this shit. I was just like the source energy, the universe, God, creation. I don't know who it is. I mean, if it is Jesus, dope. But I mean, wh whoever created us, I know speaks to me directly and wants me to be the best version of me. And that's how I fucking got here. Because every moment I have a connection and I have a path that I'm being supplied and everybody thinks they're like lost out here. And it's because they're really clouding their conscience with overeating, with drugs, with alcohol, with uh, negative choices that, that make them not be able to tap into that message. So my whole process, people are like, that seems redundant, the exercise. I said, no, the thoughts that I gain in the exercise are never the same. Mm. So I go into the workout to tap into, tap into flow state and really download true messages that have changed my life. And that's how I've become one of the greatest motivational speakers of all time because I've tapped into these messages that aren't me. So am I really a good speaker? Fuck no, I'm not. Am I really a good writer? Nope. Am I really good at articulating shit? No. I just got really good at silencing Wes Watson and listening to the message that everybody else hears. Everybody else will hear that message, but they won't deliver it correctly yeah. out of fear of yeah. sounding wrong down here. So they'll be like, is this right? It's like, no, I feel it in my fucking soul. It's right. And then when you really speak that message, people who know that as the truth, they'll never unhear it. They're like, fuck, I've heard that before, Wes. Like, in my heart, I heard it. Like, that's what true leaders do. They don't tell you what to see. They show you where to look. Like, I'll show you where to look, and I'll pull it out of you and show it to you, and you'll never unsee it. Mm. The law of exposure states once, once you've seen, you cannot unsee. Yeah, fact. Once exposed, you can't yeah. be unexposed. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Miami. That's my favorite. And everyone's got big-ass quads, yeah. and everyone's pulling out the Ferrari, and everyone's winning. You're like, ah, I've been slacking. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you... And then when you address those areas, you'll see that there was so much power in the root. So everyone will be like, why do I need big quads? Because the root of it's discipline. Mm -hmm. Well, why do I need to get more money? Because the root of it's perseverance. Yeah. What is the root answer to why you don't have the things you want? Mm. Bro, you went crazy right there. I always go, you know I always go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? I'm standing in the middle of the street and I'm willing to risk it all because I want you to grow. Whether through paid or organic measures over the next five days, the audience growth challenge, we're going to be teaching you podcast guesting strategy, video marketing strategy, social media, predictable viral creation strategies, the power of radio and digital PR. And these strategies are what you need to grow your business over the next four, six, nine, even 12 months to skyrocket your success. So if you want to join the challenge, all you got to do is click the link below and join the audience growth challenge and join it as a VIP. Let's get it. So, so uh, the person that you are now, right? What's the, what, what were you like with parenting? You know what I'm saying? Like your mom and, and, and your dad, what was that influence like? My, my mom just came back to my life recently because my wife and her were best friends the whole time we were together. And even when we broke up for like four months, um, they, were, they were best friends. They were there for each other. And, um, you know, my mom's just, my mom's gangster. Like all these motherfuckers say they'll pull up to me at the gym and they'll fuck me up because the way I talk, they're like, I'm going to come fuck you up. Better watch yourself. I'm like, I'm at the gym at 5 a.m., 4, 4 to 5 a.m. on weekdays, elevation. And I'm there at 8 a.m. on the weekends. Pull the fuck up. Don't just talk like you've been talking. Like cruise up. Don't, don't, don't fucking, don't disappoint us. Don't be like you've been with every other thing you're going to do. Accomplish this goal, motherfucker. Mm. Don't be a bitch now. They've never pulled up, but my mom did. My mom pulled up and teed off on me. She, <laughs> she teed off on me multiple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's mom's. Like, she'll come up and be like, what? And I answer my calls, dink, dink. Oh, shit. Mom, what the fuck? Dude, yeah, what the yeah. fuck? They're, she's there. You're like, damn, your mom's gangster as fuck. She'll just come up and tee off on a motherfucker. Yep. She's outspoken like me, too. I see where I get a lot of my traits. But, I mean, the thing is, is they're very simple people. I took my mom to uh, Satai for dinner the other night. And she's like, Wes, you know, this place in our area is a hundred bucks for dinner. You can't go there for dinner without spending one hundred bucks. I'm like, Mom, this is a thousand dollar dinner. The valet was a hundred bucks. She's like, I'm eating a thousand dollar dinner. That's crazy. Yeah. But like, people think maybe someone like me came from money or something. I mean, I came from a construction worker father and a hairdresser mother who barely had enough money to make it each month. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And for me. I can identify for that. Like I used to go to crack houses with my mom. Like she used to take Man. me to the crack houses. I I I I used to see her doing the drugs, all of the drugs. 
my dad was one of those fathers that he would always say, I'm going to come get you. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Always leaving me on a stoop. You know what I'm saying? Grandmother raised me. She died uh, lung cancer. Man. You know what I'm saying? Uncle the same way. Uh, aunt the same way. So what you're talking about is facts because you, you, know, you, you made a decision and you keep making those decisions. You keep choosing you, obviously. And then obviously when, when, when you just touched on loving yourself and deciding, you know, not looking for a validation. Because you were waiting on people. the stoop all the time, waiting you know for saying? dad to fucking come validate yeah. you. Yep. And it's, it's, it's not no other man's fucking job to validate another man. Mm -hmm. But I mean, now we have a different process and I show it on my Instagram every day. I mean, a lot of men told other men that their rite of passage was what? Drinking, you yeah. know? They're like, hey, come watch the football game with me. Have a beer. Or when you become a certain age, when you become 21, or even in my family, when you're, you know, 14 or something, slide you a beer, you know, yeah. drink it with dad. And um, that, was, that was a rite of passage for young males to have a drink with dad or the older, your uncles or your older brother or whoever. And that was so fucked up because that rite of passage is such garbage. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if there's people who are watching this who can handle their alcohol. You have friends who can't. And if you're the leader, your weakness is their way out. So if you have a weakness in alcohol, their way out is that. And they may not have a weakness of alcohol, but they're like, oh, Wes drinks, so I'm going to go, I can pop these pills mm. or I can be loose on my diet or whatever the fuck. True leaders have no visible weakness. So nobody has a way out. That's what people wonder why I sell more programs than anybody on the internet in my space. It's because I've proven I don't have the visible weakness like people like Tony Robbins or these other people who like they're very good at business and like these other motivational guys or these gurus or whatever, they're very good at business. We get that. But none of them came through jacked, sober, like really showing discipline in all areas mm. and documenting it. Yeah. Like, hey, I don't fuck with any of your guys' needs. I don't, I, I these things that you guys want to do and you guys desire and you guys refer to as life, I know it's just your form of escaping the reality that you're yet to create. Mm. So when a motherfucker goes and drinks or something, I mean, he's just not, he's not confident. He needs to earn more confidence. He can roll up and be, what the fuck matters what the fuck drink it is, if you're confident enough. There's no room that shakes me. Mm. I've never walked in a room that I can't, like as Goggins would say, soul steal. Like, I'll take everybody's shit. It don't matter how far along they are. They'll never, they'll never outrun me. Because I walked into level four chow halls where motherfuckers got fucking, like, fuck you on their forehead and their whole face is tatted and they're ready to take your life. Like, this is not scary to me out mm. here. Like, none of it. So, I mean, the whole point is, is like, people walk in with that fear. And I, I'm just, I'm trying to get everyone to abolish that fear. And so I want everyone to do this exercise when they're starting to get into that fear place, which is, I mean, that's that question, what if? That question, what if, is where the fear starts. What if I lose my job? What if I take this risk in starting this online business and, and I lose my other business and my wife leaves me and my kids are left hanging? Uh, what if I go to the gym and start and quit again and look like a fat bitch? Well, what if I do this? What if always leads to fear? Yeah, and that's exactly. what we don't do. Yep. My line of thinking is even if, motherfucker, even if, even if I go do this, you can't stop me. Even if I get locked up again, I'll write a better story. Mm. Even if I invest all this in my wife and she decides to leave, then I, then I would save someone who wasn't loyal in the first place. 100%. I yeah. mean, even if it happens, I'm better off. The best things that ever happened to me, I at first I thought were life were death sentences. Yeah. But they ended up being a sentence to my new life. Because in all reality, like your old life is going to cost you a new one. Well, one. 100 percent man. You got you you gotta die. That person has to it's die. You gotta die. You, know you gotta kill that bitch. Yeah. You gotta get rid of that motherfucker. Yeah, facts. So so another thing that you talk uh, a lot about, and I know um is very important to you, is personal brand. You know oh, what it's saying? everything. Personal brand. So so why don't we touch on that a little bit? I mean, a lot of business guys say a realtor or someone who wants to sell something online, they try to build a business online. Even coaches and fitness people, they try to show their business online. Hey, this is how you do bicep curls and da-da-da. They don't give a fuck about that. They get that that's what you do. <laughs> they want to connect with you. Yeah. So they don't know about real estate. So don't fucking explain to them real estate. Get them to connect with you when they trust you. They'll just let you do it for them. Like once they trust you, they'll say, I don't know. I love Wes. I trust Wes. He showed me so much of his life. He already taught me so much about my life. 
I'm going to trust him to do the fitness thing with me. Mm. They don't want to fucking learn. Like, I don't even know shit about real estate. So I want to trust someone and just give them my money. That's what most people want to do. Mm. They want to trust you and just give them their money. They don't, they don't even have the time to learn and think about it. Quit thinking they want to fucking educate themselves and do it all. They want to pay you for your expertise and your trust. So how do we build trust? Trusting habits. So what are trusting habits? The guy don't drink. The guy wakes up early. The guy reads. The guy's educated. The guy's consistent. The guy's a one-woman man. The guy doesn't drink or do drugs. The guy's a family man. This is showcasing the most trusted individual for our, our society standards. No one really trusts a lot of these entrepreneur types because they show the playboy life. Yeah. Like, and so they can't sell a program like me. They may be good at business, but they're not trusted. And I shouldn't even be that trusted. I was in prison for 10 fucking years. But I showed my trust over time. I was going to say that. Yeah, you showed I, it over time. I, you I earned made, it. I wear them down. I earned their trust. The, the most intimidating person online, though, is the person who won't fucking stop. The, the most, the, by far, the guy who will not stop working and doing his thing, he intimidates everybody above him. They're like, fuck, is he going to stop? What, he got a... He, he got did, another one? He, he got did a, he another got, yeah. one? He got more? Yeah, what the yeah, yeah. fuck? He must be doing more than I think or more than me. And what people don't realize is that guy who wears down other people, he's just eroding his, his opponent's minds. And everybody who thinks they're not in competition, you are at the high levels, trust me. At the low levels, you're in competition with you every day mm. just till you build you. But once you get into the game, now you're in the fucking game and there is competition. You have to be better than everyone. Mm. So you have to assess your weaknesses. Oh, this dude's more jacked than me. I got to get more jacked. Oh, this dude's got better style than me. I need more better style. He's got better video than me. I need better video. He's got a better setup. He articulates better. He speaks better. My goal is to be all better than everyone at everything. And that's what everyone's goal should be. Yeah. Like the hyper-success traits of the, the top individuals are this. Number one, hyper-success trait. You guys fucking ready? You, they think they're better than everyone. Number two, hyper-success trait. Never fucking satisfied. I bought two Phantoms this month. Two Phantoms. Who the fuck is so delusional and thinks they're so awesome that they need two Phantoms, you know? The fuck is that? One wasn't good enough? There's someone out there who has two in every city. Yeah, and he flies in his jet that. to each mansion in every city, and he has a driver, and the shit's bulletproof, and he sits there motherfucker working, getting served caviar in the back. Like, there's a guy at that level. I mean, what the fuck? What level do you want to be at? So number one, you think you're better than everyone. Don't cringe when I say that because if you come to West Watson, you better think you're going to be number one. We don't fuck with someone who thinks they're going to be number two. Number two of this is never satisfied. Number three is what most people lack the most, impulse control. Once you have impulse control, once you're never satisfied, and once you think you're going to be the best, those are the traits of a hyper-successful individual. So impulse control, you're saying... You're Discipline. Ba ba yeah. Okay, there you go. Right there, just really controlling your impulses. Um, tapping into your habits. Yeah, you want to know what ruins a man is liquors, ladies, and leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the guy over leverages himself. Yep. He's fucked. Mm -hmm. He wanted to look bigger than he was. He moved too quick. He took too many risks that yep. weren't warranted. And don't fucking say that because you need risks, motherfucker. Like, take your risks. You guys don't even have any money yet. We're talking about people who are actually have the means to start really creating something massive. Really cranking. At the bottom, if you, have your, if you still have 100, 200, 400 grand, Risk the fucking shit. You're still at the fucking bottom. Like, you're not even making a million a month yet. Take risks. Get to where you're making some real earned income. Don't just think passive, passive, passive income. Those motherfuckers get themselves in hot water. And you guys don't realize the top people on the planet have massive earned income. We don't talk about Jeff Bezos' real estate portfolio. We're like, the motherfucker makes $5 million a day yeah. or $17 million a day. Like, we're not, yeah, we get it. He owns some fucking houses. But the motherfucker makes real money. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to focus on. Then you get into the passive shit. But anyways, the biggest part of all this, like I was saying, is the discipline to be able to, to really create the vision that you, that you have in front of you and not be miscued by what everyone else is telling you is best or telling you need to do. Everyone told me to take a different route. And I fucking didn't. I took my fucking route. Like what I want to fucking see. How I fucking speak. Like, authenticity is the highest frequency. Yeah, I think the way that you speak actually attracts the people that's for you. You know, like, some people 100%. don't like, yeah, like, some people, like, oh, I can't talk to someone or listen to someone that's abrasive, that swears, you know what I'm saying, that's aggressive. But I feel like the ones that uh, are aligned in that message, they're going to be attracted to you. Yeah, you know so saying? when people say that, they're like, 
oh, I don't get taught that way. I said, I don't listen to a bitch who stutters who doesn't have what they want, motherfucker. <laughs> but I, I never fucking half stepped on one word I said because I'm me, motherfucker. This is how it is. We're taking it this way. That's it. And um, I need people to be confident. Yeah. I need you to have the life I want for me to even listen to you. What, what I mean, the most like hypo hypothetical is hypocritical. Mm. These motherfuckers are hypothetical motherfuckers. Like they, they, they talk about, they even like a Harvard MBA teacher, like, I don't have no fucking money. Yeah, he don't. Like, how the fuck is he going to teach you a business degree and he ain't make shit? Probably don't even have a business. He don't even have a fucking business. Probably don't even have a business. He hypothetically understands fucking you know, business. He can read He that, can read the book and teach that oh lesson. Oh, my. Those that can't do teach. Yeah. But, I mean, that's the thing about me. I really, I really did first. So, yeah. I really built from the ground up, from working at my grandma's house on my fucking phone, selling $250 programs one month at a time, making fucking, you know, 800 to 3,000 a month on my biggest months and then blowing up on YouTube and then understanding my business and my offers, never stopping on my content to now making 2.7 million in a clean month. Mm. So, I mean, I went from 800 a month to 2.7 in a month and I never sold, I never sold the me teaching you how to build your brand till I already made 20, 30 million. Yeah. So what people do wrong nowadays is they don't even have a brand and they teach branding. Yeah. I'm like, they're like, well, Wes, I want to teach people uh, branding and stuff. I said, you don't have a brand. You bought your followers. And they're like, oh, well, uh, uh, I'm like, bro, you, you may understand how to build a brand, but are you that motherfucker who posts a video about how to get a bunch of likes and views and that video doesn't even have likes and views? Facts. Shoot yourself. Yeah, yeah, facts. Like I saw yeah. a top guy the other day fucking uh, post, hey, how to really get your a lot of views on your Instagram post. And the thing didn't even have a lot of views. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now it's time to opt out of the internet, motherfucker. Yeah. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, I never make videos about that. I just show that I can do it. <clears throat> but, I mean, your personal brand is everything nowadays, and it's you. Yeah. Like, I could sell bottled fucking water right now at eight figures. I have a big enough following that if I wanted to bottle fucking some dope-ass water that had the, you know, the stuff I like in it, I could fucking sell it for 12 bucks a fucking Watson bottle. Water. We could fucking do it. I like it. Like next thing, I'm going to have that jet with my logo on it by the end of the fucking year. Yeah, yeah. It's at the level where I have to. Mm. And I mean, like people just don't understand. They're always like, what do you do? I'm like, bro, look at that video. It has millions of views. I've been getting millions of views for six years online, seven years online. Millions. up, Dude, I have billions of views across all platforms online. If we talk about every podcast I've been on, every YouTube video I dropped, I have hundreds, hundreds of millions of views on YouTube alone on just my channel. Mm. Imagine all of the views um, on combined. Other yeah, yeah. Facts. So then we're selling a program from two ninety nine to two thousand dollars, and then a program from uh, three thousand dollars to twenty thousand, then a program from six thousand to forty thousand. Mm. Now I'm talking to so many people each day, three to five hundred people, and I'm selling them these programs personally. I sell them, and the thing is, is like, how the fuck could I not make a hundred grand a day at this point? People just don't understand the fucking volume online. And I teach them. So I've had people come through. And they're like, well, what do you teach me? And I'm like, are you fucking stupid? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, you clicked on a video that I posted. And now we're talking, right? And you're about to buy my product. Isn't that what you want? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Then sign up and have me teach you how to do that. Yep, and if you think you could do it on your own, Try, motherfucker. That actually happened yesterday. Uh, I had I had somebody literally the same process, but then I'm on the phone with them and they ask me all these other questions. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, bro, but you're here. This is what you this, want. Yeah, this stupid. is what you wanted. Yeah, you just want this. Yep. I don't care if you're a real estate agent. You want to build sales coaching because you're good at sales. Yep. You're a fucking fitness trainer, a life coach, anything you want to do. I don't give a fuck. I should just be able to get you the intro. If I can get you the intro into your DM. Then you were golden, right? You're good. Put me in the fucking room. I'll sell the whole fucking room. Yep. People put me on stages and rooms, and I sell the whole fucking room. I walk out making five, six hundred thousand dollars off selling seventy five hundred, twenty thousand, three thousand, seven fifty, twelve ninety nine. By the time the event is total, has totaled everything, it's four to six hundred thousand off one hour of speaking that I got paid for. People just don't get it. They don't get the volume. And, they, and it's a lot of people that don't understand personal development. And then a lot of people that don't, don't understand the power of a personal brand. Well, that's what I was going to say. A lot of that is, is, is attributed to that personal if, brand. If, if, you don't, if you pay 20000 with me 
to build your personal brand. Like I honestly make five times that a day. There's no fucking way if I don't just tell you exactly what I did mm. and you get out of your way saying, not thinking, I'm not Wes Watson though. I'm not Wes Watson though. If you can just realize that we're going to make for you what I did, but with your zone of genius, real estate, sales, life coaching, fitness, whatever we can coach other people in yeah. your zone of genius, then we're easily going to be able to 10X your investment. This is better than Bitcoin, better than real estate, better than anything. I agree with that. Hey, listen, if you're looking to grow your podcast business or you're looking to leverage podcasts to grow your business, you want to tap in to the Podcast to Profits Academy. We're going to teach you exactly what it takes for you to get more exposure to grow and scale your business or leverage podcasts so you can do more revenue. What you want to do is head over to podcast2profits.com and apply to work with me and a member of my team. I speak to a lot of uh, podcasters, right? And podcasters have no idea how to make money, right? Oh they, my God. They, they think it's, uh, you know, brand deals, YouTube money, Spotify downloads. Oh my God. Right? So I teach them, you know. So pennies. Exactly, right? So so I teach them different ways to do it. So if there's a podcast entrepreneur listening right now, right, what are some ways you would teach them how to really get to the bag with a podcast? I mean, I just want to build their audience. If they have a core audience that trusts them and they're trying to push their podcast, it's going to be very easy for them to fucking just learn to teach people how to monetize an audience. Once they've monetized an audience, they can teach people how to monetize an audience. I mean, even one of my guys, Brad Lee, has this. It says, make money with Brad. And he has, it says, businessman with a podcast. It says, make money with Brad. Then he has like a, a link. You click the link and it's sell solar or sell life insurance. Mm -hmm. Then he has like a 12,000 person team of people who want a lifestyle like him and they're selling. And then he's teaching them sales skills. I think the two best skills are personal development and sales. 100%. But I mean, once we get your podcast views up and we really get your, your brand monetized, we can sell anything. I mean, I really, the best route is coaching though. Personal development and coaching. Because to even, you, you got to understand, even to get on camera, even to have your confidence, even, even, I don't even want to out no, you, but crazy. even trying no, to get the crazy. girl, even trying to get the girl's yeah. number in the fucking 100%. elevator, yeah. him getting the girl's number in the elevator right now was fucking money. Yep. Like that's money, bro. Mm. You know how many guys, that is their fear of talking to women. Yeah. He didn't give a fuck. He's like, oh, dope shoes. How's your day going? Let me get your number. Done. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, do you know how we all want that in the end? In the end, we all want a relationship with someone we love and we want to feel like we're building our family, our our home. And that's what we're all after. What are we really after the money? Yeah. We're after that dream, right? Yep. Yeah. So what the fuck? Experiences and moments. So you know, there's plenty of people who have money that don't have that. And fuck, man, like you you went straight to the chase. <laughs> I mean, you could be a dating coach, a relationship coach in one second. But um teaching guys how to pull chicks. But I mean, it's then it's everything. I mean, I would just I would diagnose something in that podcaster that he can easily monetize. And then he could teach them that business yeah. as that business as well, how to build it, what how to get uh, odd people on his audience, whatever. But I would have him have two streams right away. One would be from his obvious skill set which is a personal development skill set yeah i agree with that um and the thing about it is this right they doubt themselves that's where it is it that's the it. problem it, they, they they really doubt themselves and even when i go and i share some things about how they can really get to the back it always go back to but i don't got enough youtube subscribers and it's like yo I don't have a lot of YouTube subscribers, but I make a lot of money with my podcast. I, was, I build businesses with my podcast. I have I've a podcast agency, right, right, that helps people get on shows, right? That's a seven-figure agency. There, I have a, there I, it is. I have an editing agency, right, that that basically does the, the podcast edits, short-form edits, long-form edits. And, and, and another thing that happens is they get all the content. And probably people that even interview you, right? They get all the content. They don't do nothing with the content. This, this, this was crazy. So one of my clients came to me. And um, he said, um, I want to be an online coach like you, fitness, mindset, training, nutrition. And so I teach him how to do that. And then it really wasn't picking up that much. And he started picking up a camera. And he's like, I love filming and stuff. So then within the first calendar year, he made a million-dollar business off filming mm. and editing. Yep. You just got to get in the space and yeah. see where you go into flow state, like where you really find yourself. Mine was working out. Like originally I started with, Training and nutrition. Mm. I can do your workouts on an app and your nutrition on an app and change your life. 
I didn't even speak that much on camera. I just thought that's what I would do yeah. because that's what I did in prison. And that's what gave me the most confidence and changed my life the most. So it starts off with a skill set like that. So you have a skill set of connecting. You have a skill set of breaking down what worked in your business and teaching that. So, I mean, that's a skill set. That's a financial skill set. That is a seven-figure skill set. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's the importance of exposure, right? I mean, a, whether, whether it's good or bad, exposures. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite quotes from back in the day is I don't give a fuck about what you what you say about me, just spell my name right. Yeah. So that was P.T. Barnum that said that. I don't give a fuck what you say about me, motherfucker. Just spell my name right. I, I get good and bad exposure like a motherfucker, but I don't care. It's all exposure. When they get to my page, any intelligent person is going to make their assessment of me. An unintelligent person is just going to go off what the other page said and mm. do no research. So I'm able to just draw a line down the sand and make sure that I'm able to get my clients from there. Why do you go on podcasts? I go on podcasts because I got shit to fucking say. <laughs> I've changed my life in such a big way that I know that even seven of the gems I dropped right here are going to imprint in people's minds and that when they come to a hard time, when they come to a fork in the road where they need to make a decision, they're going to remember, oh no, the world as is, the world is as it is, not the world is is as as it is, not as as you are. Mm -hmm. So like as soon as you make yourself that best version of you, then the world starts to look like that. So the world is like, as you create the best you, you start to see a better world around you yeah. is what that means. And so I, I really don't get how people don't understand that they have to create, they have to get up and answer all the shit that'll make them feel good. And then they'll have the confidence and that positive mental attitude to push forward. In the businesses that you have right now, what are some of the obstacles that you run into as someone that is successful? Um, I, my obstacles are just mainly, um, you know, time constraints. Like I just, I'll work all fucking day. So I'll work till 12 at night from 2.45 in the morning. And then I'll sleep like fucking literally two, two and a half hours. Cause I'm like, oh, in Cali, it's nine o'clock. I can still make some sales. Yeah. And I'll, I'll run up till 12 o'clock. Sometimes I won't even sleep. If your phone was ringing as much as mine and each, each text message was potentially 40,000 bucks and routinely is, would you miss it? Fuck no. I, want, I probably wouldn't miss that. Yeah, I want to fucking get it. Yeah. So I barely sleep. But that's probably my biggest challenge is um, putting down the work. But I don't believe in that. I believe in having a fucking run and then uh, figuring out what you want to do later. I mean, a lot of people will tell me, well, Wes, you got to uh, automate and delegate. and You got to do all this shit. I'm like, yeah, but I make more than you. So why the fuck are you talking? And your profit's so low, you need six other businesses. Shut the fuck up. I'll do this for a few years and I'll make investments and I'll beat you at this. Yeah. Like I already know where you're at. You make, you make eight figures, but you profit 30 to 40%. I make fucking multi eight figures and I profit 85 to 90%. We have different business models. You know? So that flow state, right? And then since you work so hard and it sounds like you don't take a lot of time off, right? So, yeah. so is that morning time really like, like your flow state and your time yeah, morning, off? Morning that time is the time for me to gain my path and where I'm going and who I need to be for the day. I really think if you sacrifice the mind and body all day, if you really fucking break yourself down, you really give all above and you're really a servant to everybody around you, I feel that in the end of the day, that's when the spirit will take over, when the mind and body are broken. Mm. So if you, break your, if you break yourself mentally, if you break yourself physically and you still show up and you don't give a fuck, that's when you really strengthen your soul and that's when your spirit becomes strong. And people don't get there. They don't go there because they don't pay you to go there. They pay you to do the work in this world. I do the work in the other world. And it, when I walk in the room, you can tell there's a different motherfucker standing in front of you. You can tell there's someone who has substance. You can tell there's someone who's not going to break for nothing. And that's where, you, that's where everything's built. That's why someone like Goggins runs so far. He's just breaking himself. Yeah, 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 He's fucking breaking himself. So he has to pull out something different every fucking time. And deep in that trench, walking through that fire, he finds a different fuck. He, he taps into a different message that he didn't know before. And now he's unlocked and learned that level. Now he's earned that. That's his. Now when other people say it, it strengthens him. Strengthens him. When he says it, it strengthens him. And he earned that. That's his. So there's a lot of shit that I say that the world says now that I earned. That's mine. They only add to me when they say it. Yeah. And when they say it, they subconsciously know they should give me the props. And they don't. And that just takes away from them. So as they speak the shit that I taught them, I go up and they go down. And they don't realize that. I watch them, I watch them wanna say it. The ones that give props, they build themselves too. 
So they're like, I learned this from this motherfucker. And they smile or they're proud of their clients. Like I'm proud of building my wife right now. She didn't feel like she had safety because I just gave her money. Yeah. And if something happened to me, bit. she'd have no money. And so like she's, she still has millions and millions. If something happens to me, her ring's worth a million dollars. So, I mean, but the point is, is like, she didn't feel safe. I'm like, your ring's worth more than you've ever had. What are you talking about? And then I'm like, okay, she's not going to feel safe till I build her a million dollar a month business. Let's go. Yeah. First day we started pitching her offers, we made her eight grand. So I'm like, okay, quarter million first month, let's do this. And it's like, I just, I take the best fucking result and I just times it by the amount of days. That's what we're doing, motherfucker. Yep. And I don't doubt it. Someone else could have an eight grand day and say, what if I do two tomorrow? And they would just shit on themselves. Then they would actually do the work of someone who's going to make, get two. Yeah, like, facts. I make 52,000 to 55,000 a day in my recurring revenue every fucking day. And I still have to sell 30 grand a day. Right now, before I came in here, I was at like 17 or 18 grand. It was two o'clock, 2.30. I'll make my 30 today, but I, I have to sell 30 a day because that's like a mil a month. Yeah. But I already make almost two mil a month without doing anything. You know, most people would just go kicking on an island and say, I've done enough. I told everybody that my brand was created around the man that I needed. The man I needed my whole life was a man who wouldn't break his word for shit. And so I've never broken. Nobody's ever seen me miss a post. Nobody's ever seen me miss a YouTube upload. Nobody's ever seen me miss any of the stuff that I teach. So by far, I'm the best teacher because I live it. Mm. The, only, the best teacher isn't the one with the best result. The best teacher is the one that lives his teaching most congruently. So, I mean, because some people, their result could be more genetic. Their result could be more even luck. Like they could have they could have been into a, stepped into a business with their family or whatever that just catapulted them. So it can't always be the result but it can be someone who applies their wisdom across the board unbiasedly. So if someone says a quote, like the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Yeah. And then the guy's got tits, but he's in a Rolls Royce. I'm like, well, this guy's completely fucking delusional. He doesn't even get what the fuck he's saying. He doesn't realize that he's not even addressing the gym or his body. And he's probably saying it's all about mind, body, soul growth. And another fucking quote. Yeah. And his body's just fucking deteriorating. He's treating it like shit. It's just, there's so much to all this to unpack, but I always just say, it is prison sign language. Ripped, rich, rare, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. That's three R's. Yeah, three R's. But I really just fucking, I really just tell people it has to be across the board or I can't respect you. I know you have a big weakness. And you'll see a motherfucker, like a rich-ass motherfucker, uh, like living his life, and he thinks he's killing it. He's got his shirt off, and he's so fucking insecure because he forgot to address the body. And it's some shit like this, and he's trying to cover himself. I never seen such a bitch maneuver in my life than a man trying to cover his body. Motherfucker, go in the fucking gym till you don't have to do that, yep. you pathetic piece of shit. Like, we're all watching your weak-ass moves like that, and we're just wondering why the fuck you don't address that shit. Like, get your fucking ass in the gym, quit eating so fucking much, and Wes Watson can help you with that. But realize that the way you view you is how your people view you. And if you fucking are embarrassed of your shit, your people yeah, are embarrassed of you. They're going to see that, too. If you're embarrassed of your body, your chick's embarrassed of your fucking body. Like, fuck that. I, my chick ain't being embarrassed to me about nothing. Like, every chick messages me like, how did she find a guy like you? I'm like, babe, we're selling a new course. How to find a guy like Wes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking 10,000 bucks a month, motherfucker yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. It's worth more than that. Yeah. Like, if you don't pay a fee to get the life you want, it's because you don't believe you're you, worth it. Yeah, That's the same thing as a motherfucker who won't pull up in something he likes or some dope shit. Motherfucker don't feel he's worth it. And he's like, why do you buy cars like that? Because I'm worth it? Like, well, why, why do you wear a fucking Richard Mill watch that's 500000 Because I'm worth it. Well, I have that much money and I don't because you ain't worth it. Yeah. You, you still feel like you're not going to make it. I have complete faith that I'll make it. And guess what? I don't have to make it to make it. I already made it by being me, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You didn't even address all the areas it's you. And that's these motherfuckers who say, yeah. I had all the money, I had the perfect life, but I was still miserable. I know you were there. Yeah. You were still there, bitch. And you were the problem. You never had a personal development program that lifted you like a motherfucker and made you an advocate, made you an offering, made you know that you owe your family the best version of you. You let your kids get fat and shit, motherfucker? Fuck's the matter with you. When you're a fat dude and you let your kids get fat, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, you really don't realize that that was the greatest source of your pain your whole life, 
and you just bestowed it onto your children and you told them you loved them, you're stupid as shit. Yeah. But they're not even aware of this yeah. till I say it. And then they're like, fuck you. Like, how could you say that? Ugh. And they just get all mad. I'm like, don't get mad at me. It's always been there the whole time. You did that yeah. shit. Like every situation is taking place right now that you wish to attract in your life. It's all taking place. It's just whether you're in the, the frequency to attract it yeah. or repel it. You know? 100%. Are you still wondering how to grow your brand? Do you understand that podcast guesting is the number one way for you to get in front of more people, capture those eyeballs, do more business, and do more sales? What do you think Wes Watson's doing, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, David Goggins, even the president? They're going on podcasts. How do you even think Andrew Tate became the most searchable person on the internet? He took over the podcast game. You're still searching for how to do it, but all you need to do is click that link below, right? Podcast guessing or comment the word podcast below. Let's get it. So you moved to Miami. I'm moving to Miami. So you got to move to Miami. You right? got to. All right. I'll be there June 1st. So the question. Oh, what, damn. The question Ooh. I got, right, is this. What, penthouse or house? Penthouse. Penthouse. Boom. You know what what building are you looking at? I got to find one. I, I looked at some joints in Edgewater earlier today. I'm Edgewater's saying design, cool. I'm saying the design. I district. tried to look at uh, the penthouses and Thousand Museum, and it was 90000 a month. I said, good. I got it. What's up? Let's run. They're like, D this guy can't move in here. Look at his criminal record. <laughs> I had Tim Grover. Kobe and Michael's old coach yeah. write me a reference letter. That shit ain't And they work. still said no. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm like, that's motherfucker Grover. All you got to do is do a promo for them. Those motherfuckers, man. I did an alternate promo. <laughs> I, I told them, fuck these motherfuckers. <laughs> I did the opposite of a promo. Uh, they, they, what do they want me to do? Fucking, like, they, they're like, this guy can't live around Beckham and Posh Spice or whoever the fuck it is. Uh, these, these people, man, I don't even fucking know. They probably but. all tapped in. So... Uh, the reason why the reason why I even mentioned the, the movement thing is someone that might be watching this right now, right, or listening to it, and they're like, "Yo, the stuff that Wes saying, I'm definitely inspired by it, right? But I'm afraid to move. You know what I'm saying? Should I should I should I move? Should I move to a different city? Should I move to a different state? Should should I get away from people that don't that don't think like how I'm thinking? What would you say to them? I don't even have a choice. Just wherever I'm drawn to, I go, you know? Mm. Like, if I'm drawn to it, I go. I go where the energy, where it feels right. I follow the energy. If it's stagnant, I'm gone. Yeah. That's why That's I, I thought about LA. That uh, if, if it's stagnant, I'm gone. Yeah. If I don't wake up excited, I'm fucking gone. That's why I buy so many new cars. I do all this shit. Because people don't even realize, like, if, if you haven't got sh in shape and got really ripped, you can't say it's not all about being ripped. Mm. If you haven't bought a bunch of shit and have a bunch of dope-ass crazy shit, you can't say it's not all about the money. Yeah. Like, once I've done that, now I can. Yeah. So now I can sit in peace and ha I have all the shit. I don't even need it now. Now I could be like, it is about my family. Mm. But the guy who's never spent the money, the guy who's never got in shape, and he says it's all about family, he don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Really deep down, he's like, God. Like, he's just denouncing what he really needs to understand, who he would create if he went down that path and acquired these things that were so difficult for him. Because it's not like you're denouncing the money because it's fucking easy for you. It's because it's too hard for you. And yeah. you, you feel like it's this or that. You feel like it's either all about family or all about money. When in all reality, when you are having your personal development process in the morning and you're building the best you, it's all about you. Mm. And then when you go to the gym in the morning, it's all about the gym and building muscle. And then when you go to your relationship and you're at dinner with your wife, it's all about your relationship. And when you're with your kids and your family, it's all about family. Why the fuck is everyone so stupid where it has to be this or that? That's a fact, bro. It's this and that. Yes, everything. Like, it's all. Compartmentalize, monotask. Whatever you're doing, choose to be the best at. I don't even remember what my life is right now when I'm on this podcast. I've gone into complete flow state. I have no worries, no fears, no nothing. I'm, at, I'm the definition of what I call inner peace, not knowing time as it passes by. Yeah. We could do this for three fucking hours. Facts. I would let obligations I have just fully fall off because I don't even know where I'm at right now. When you get into places like this, this is a, a target of where your life should go. So whatever you do that you lose track of time, that's flow state, and that is a complete fucking just compass rose to what you should work on. Yeah. If it's art, Perfect. If it's music, perfect. If it's the gym, perfect. And then you have to be honest. During these things that you were being called from your conscience to do, did you have negative self-talk? Did you make it miserable? Did you talk yourself out of it? Did you really do the work to get into flow state? That's where people are really dishonest. Bro, you, you went crazy. 
You yeah. went crazy right yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? But we For always sure. we know this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, before we wrap up, in your program, you know, you're helping people get to the highest level of themselves. But if someone's not in the program right now, what's one or two things that you would share with them uh, to help them get get on the path? I would just get them on the path with an early wake up. Get get in the four a.m. club. Fuck yep. it. Get four a.m. club. Get in the four a.m. club. Like Kobe said, you know, just like these monsters in the game. They're four a.m. club motherfuckers. I'm already at the gym at four. So get in the four a.m. club. Drop your drinking and, and drugs. Fucking uh, start reading personal development books. Pick anything. Start with my book, Non Negotiable by Wes Watson. I sold over a million copies at twelve ninety five each. You guys forgot that I made money off that too. You guys need to pay attention. So. Um, Early wake up, 4 a.m. I think I'm gonna need the book. I don't think I, I, I don't think I knew that you had a book. Yeah, I have a book. Yeah, I have yeah, yeah. bestseller, international yeah. bestseller. I'm gonna need that. Four, hundred yeah. percent. 4 a.m. wake up. Um, join the 4 a.m. club. Um, read personal development books. Drop the drugs and alcohol. Start working out each day and um, track your macronutrients. Know what's on your plate. Real motherfuckers don't guess. Don't guess what's on your plate. Like, do you really feel like you're gonna be creating this level of cognition? To be a, to fuck with someone like Wes Watson, if you don't even know what's on your plate, that's a fact. Like you're just throwing some shit on there and hoping it works out. Is that what you do in your relationship too? <laughs> you guys realize that people have broken down all this shit, the exact numbers on your plate, what you have to say to your chick when she's acting like this. Like everything has been broken down by yeah. top people, and the weird thing is, it works every time. They've actually been through it. They jumped that fucking hurdle a long time ago. That's actually why I got my blood work done. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm I've been vegan for like four years, but I did it for the discipline. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I got the blood work done to find out what does my body actually need. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm gonna eat for that. So yeah, the 10x people do that well here too. Miami's all about that shit, all that type of health. I really just I've tracked my macros, workout. I keep it way simple, and I've just done all that. But the main focus for everybody is to realize what their purpose on this planet is is to create the best version of themselves and give that person to the world. Yeah. And a lot of you guys don't realize the greatest skill set you'll ever have that's monetizable is the fact that you quit drinking, the fact that you've been a good man, the fact that you're a great father. A great father is such a monetizable skill set in a world full of shit yeah, bags. Yeah, yeah. A great father. If you're a great father out there, I can make a program behind you. If you quit drinking and doing drugs, I can make a program behind you. If you sold a shitload of real estate, I can make a program behind you. If you've just fucking really took control of your life, I can make a program behind you. And the thing is, my programs, the, the business we're in online, you see how he said he has a seven-figure business off teaching people how to really monetize their podcast. The bottom of this shit, you guys, listen when I say this, the bottom of this pays more than your fuck the doctor that you visit. Like the bottom of this is seven figures. The bottom. Yeah. I make multi seven figures a month. I drove one of my phantoms here that I cashed out. Like I'm a stupid motherfucker. This shit is 250. My other one's 500. You know, I didn't just buy one Richie, I bought two. And I made fun of myself when I came to Miami. I'm like, these motherfuckers in these Richard Mills. I only had Rolexes. It was. Yeah, yeah, you, you. I, I saw. I listened to a podcast. You were talking about you bought the watch because your friend opened the shop. It, it was giving me a headache, like yeah. that these motherfuckers had these watches, and I'm like, motherfucker, that's the level we gotta spend three hundred on watch. <laughs> and then my boy opened a shop, Bindi and Avi, Avi and Co. I know Bindi since before I went to prison. So when we were kids, used to push weight, and um, he opens a store with Avi, and then we were at the opening. And I'm a firm believer, you better support your fucking people. If your people start a business, you better fucking support them, you pieces of shit. So my homie opens the store, and I'm buying something. And I'm not cheap, so I'm a buy. I'm Babe, what's, what's the intro, Richard Mill? Yeah, that one's 180. I don't like that one. What's the one step up? I'll start there. Oh, that one, the carbon one? Because I didn't like the stainless ones. The, st the metal ones aren't really the lick. Like, you mm. need the carbon or the ceramic. So I'm, I want that one. Okay, I'll get that one. That's a good one. It was like 240 or something, you know, and that, that was like a good intro for me. But my boy opened a shop and I had to support it. Fact. I support sales. I'm in sales. You're in sales. We're in marketing and sales. If you don't support your people who do sales and marketing, you're just not giving back to the space. And everybody who operates from scarcity and they contract like right now, the housing market is down. Everyone contract. What the fuck is that? I expand when people contract. My boy just bought a Bugatti right now. Like, I mean, we don't do that. We don't operate from fear. We break through everybody else's contraction phases. I guarantee him buying that will like cause a ripple effect 
of a lot of people going, what the fuck am I so scared for with my money? Mm. I'm going to live too. Yeah. And they'll go live. And if everyone decided to live, then everybody would get paid. And if everyone got paid, that's, that's what would cycle the economy and grow it more. Except that a lot of people sit on their money and they don't want other people to get paid. They just want to get paid. Yeah. So they fuck the economy up. So we're in an election year, right? Yeah. So everyone's being distracted. We got all these messages. It's red, it's blue. It's, I can't vote, so I don't really pay attention. But <laughs> so so for so for people with all these distractions going on during election year, what should they focus on? It's just only you. Focus on you and you'll attract everything. Mm. Don't even sit there focusing on your chick. Don't even sit there focusing on your kids really that much. Focus on being the best you and let them witness you live. Yeah. Live and let witness. Like, your kids will fucking be doing burpees with you if you're doing them. If you're tracking your food, eating healthy, they'll say, Dad, I want that. Like, they'll, they follow you. Don't just tell them what to do and not live it. It's bullshit. Yo, man, dude, this was dope, bro. Loved it. This was dope, man. I love Listen, firing off. This has been another episode of the Honor Pursuit Podcast. Wes, let them know how they can tap in. What would you got going on? GP Penitentiary Life with Wes Watson on YouTube. We have over 100 million views. I mean, there's, I never miss a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 a.m. upload, and that's where my YouTube channel's at. You can go to westwatson.com and apply for coaching, and when you apply for coaching, don't make this mistake. Don't come in calling me a bot or any of this bullshit because I answer all my fucking leads. If the lead comes through my fucking website, I personally answer it. I personally answer that shit. And so what we're going to do is when you come through, know you're talking to me, and just tell me what the fuck you want to do. I'm going to ask questions, but you're talking to me personally. And then also Watson underscore fit. So westwatson.com for coaching, Watson underscore fit on Instagram, and GP Penitentiary Life YouTube channel for some free game. Listen, man, it's Brendan Boyd, it's Wes Watson. Oh, we got the double initials. That's superhero yes, shit. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Everybody yes, knows sir. that. My guy. Yeah, dog. Yeah. Hell yeah.